everyone here okay at the back? Brilliant. Okay. Well, thank you ever so much for coming along. Um, it's brilliant to see so many of you there, especially with um, all the other exciting things that are going on today. Um, before I start on the talk, I'd just like to take a moment just to introduce myself a little bit more. Um, so Richard said I'm the new director of Animal Aid, um, and I would like this talk to be a positive one, and I hope it will be, but it is, of course, tinged with um, a bit of sadness, because our brilliant former director, Andrew Tyler, has sadly had to retire after more than two decades of incredible work for animals at Animal Aid. So I'm going to be building on Andrew's amazing achievements and trying to make sure that we continue to make really exciting progress for animals um, in years to come. So first of all, I'd just like to mention how keen I am to continue Andrew's ethos um, and make sure that we continue to work closely with grassroots campaigners. So all the dedicated people who make progress for animals possible by campaigning in their spare time. And you can see just a few of those brilliant people in the photos on the slide. This is our recent Compassionate Christmas Outreach Day, where we encourage people to run uh, information stalls and give information to members of the public about having a cruelty-free Christmas. And these are just a couple of the events that took place across the country. So moving on to today's talk, um, I'm going to be talking briefly about why now is such an exciting time for animals. I'm give, going to be giving you just a few examples of exciting progress that has been made for animals in recent times. I'm going to be speaking a little bit about animal aid campaigns, but also about progress for animals more widely. Um, and then I'm going to be looking forward to 2017 and talking about why I'm feeling really positive about how that's going to be a really exciting time for animals too, and letting you know how you can get involved with our work in 2017 and beyond. And I am going to, as Richard mentioned, set aside a bit of time for questions at the end. Um, I'm sure you've got lots of them, but if you do have any burning questions as I'm going through the talk, then do feel free just to put your hand up and I'm happy to answer questions as we're going along too. So, starting with some positive progress that's been made in recent times, I think the best place to start is the incredible growth in veganism over the last few years. So, this year, um, we found out the results of an Ipsos Mori poll, which was commissioned by the Vegan Society and Vegan Life magazine, and it showed that there are now more than half a million vegans in the UK. So that's 542,000 people following the vegan diet. And incredibly, that's an increase of 350% over a decade, which is obviously an enormous growth. And that poll was released back in May, so it's the chance now that in fact the number is even higher now, because we know that veganism is a really fast-growing movement that's becoming more popular in the time. And you probably know about our, our great vegan challenges where we give people the chance to go vegan for a month and we give them all the support that they could need to do that. Well, a really positive development this year is that we've never had so much interest in our vegan challenges. Um, in November, World Vegan Month, of course, we ran our annual Great Vegan Challenge and we had more than 2,500 people taking part, which was an absolutely incredible number. Um, and all those people were receiving really intensive individual support with trying out a vegan lifestyle. So they received um, newsletters, information packs with recipes and nutrition information, um, news about vegan events, special offers, all that sort of thing. And another really exciting thing that we offered them was a trip to a, a vegan-run animal sanctuary. You can probably have heard of it, the Treat Animal Sanctuary in Kent, um, which has a lot of farmed animals, and we gave the people taking part in the challenge the opportunity to visit the sanctuary and meet the animals who they were saving as a result of going vegan. 
It was a really positive day. You can see there from the slide, um, we had a vegan buffet on offer for them, so we also had a chance to showcase how delicious vegan food could be, and of course give them the chance to make that really positive connection with the animals, the whole reason why they were going to eat them. Um, and I'll be talking about it a little bit more later on, but in February we'll be running our Great Vegan University Challenge, um, which is similar to the Great Vegan Challenge, but designed specifically for students and tailored to their needs. And we're expecting a really big uptake in that too. And another brilliant thing at the moment is that it's never been easier to be vegan. We're seeing a huge growth um, in vegan options offered by big chain restaurants and coffee shops. You can see Dizzy is one of those that has a pizza restaurant that has an actual dedicated vegan menu. Um, and Webspoon, Prep, Costa, lots of other places that are offering vegan options now too. So of course it's always been possible to be attached as a vegan, but now it's becoming a lot easier. And recently, we've even seen the last month or so, vegan festive products being available. So um, Chris Morgan, I think, is doing a, a festive baguette, and Costa is doing a Christmas cake slice. And even just a couple of years ago, the idea that you could buy um, vegan festive products in sort of mainstream coffee shops would have been absolutely unthinkable. Um, and of course, there's a huge range of products available in supermarkets now too. Uh, just a couple of examples are the Sainsbury's cheese range, the vegan cheese range, <laughs> cheers for that, that's recently come out. Um, and of course the sushi that you can see on there, which is vegan available in Waitrose. Now of course I know that a lot of people would rather support independent businesses than these sort of big chain coffee shops and supermarkets. But it does help to demonstrate the growing popularity of veganism and how easy it is to be vegan. Day, which of course is a classic And it's not just that vegan food is more widely available, but there's a constant flow of new and innovative vegan products too. Just a couple of examples of the new vegan egg product, um, vegan egg mayonnaise made by Badgers, which is like sort of actual sandwich filling, um, vegan cottage cheese, all sorts of really exciting new vegan Product. It seems that these days there's virtually nothing that you can't get a vegan version of. And of course, wandering around the fair today is a brilliant opportunity to see uh, a huge showcase of some of these new and innovative vegan products. Now, of course, veganism is a key area of, pro of progress and one that has a huge impact for animals. But I'd like to talk briefly about some progress in other areas now, too. I'm going to talk briefly about some really brilliant progress this year on the campaign for CCTV in slaughter housing. And I'm sure lots of you have heard about this campaign already, but just a quick outline for those of you who haven't. Um, since 2009, Anne Lake has been running undercover investigations inside UK slaughter houses. And inside nine out of the ten slaughter houses we've investigated, we found evidence of law breaking and cruelty. So since we began our investigations, we've been pushing for properly monitored CCTV to be mandatory for all slaughterhouses. Now, of course, slaughter will always be a brutal and cruel process, and we would like to see an end to it altogether, of course. But we do believe that having CCTV would help to end some of the gratuitous violence that we've discovered during our investigations. So we've been pushing on this issue for a number of years. Um, the campaign has been gathering momentum, and this year there has been some really exciting developments. In August, an independent report was released, which was commissioned by Assetamale, but authored by a team of independent experts. And it found that a programme of properly monitored CCTV would be both cost-effective and feasible, and it set out um, a precise um, sliding scale of cost to show just how modest these would be. Just recently, the Scottish National Party adopted support for mandatory CCTV as part of policy, and we're of course working really hard to make sure that all the other political parties follow suit too. And even the Food Standards Agency, 
which is the authority responsible for regulating slaughterhouses, has now officially agreed to start pushing for mandatory CCTV. And we've had more political support for the campaign than ever before. You can see on the slide just a small selection of MPs who have supported the campaign. Uh, they don't have clear it is to see there, but you can, they're holding um, posters in support of the campaign saying that they support mandatory CCTV in slaughter housing. Um, the latest parliamentary motion that was tabled in support of this campaign ended this year with a record number of signatures and it made the top 10 most supported list of motions for that parliamentary session. So it did really, really well. And in fact, um, just last week, there was a debate <coughs> held um, in Parliament on CCTV and equine slaughterhouses, which was organised by World Horse Welfare. But we, of course, briefed MPs to go and support that, but also <coughs> push more widely for CCTV in all slaughterhouses, not just those slaughtering horses. And we had a really positive response with a cross-section um, of MPs from all parties supporting not just CCTV and equine slaughterhouses, but actually in, in all slaughterhouses, no matter what animals are being killed there. So we know that we do still have a way to go with this campaign. It is very much a long-term one, but it's gathering a really exciting amount of momentum, and 2016 has been particularly good for it. So I'd like to talk briefly about the SAVE movement, which of course has been around for a number of years and has seen a lot of growth in 2016. Now I'm sure many of you will know what this is or be involved in it yourself, but for those of you who might not know, um, activists from SAVE groups organise peaceful vigils outside slaughterhouses in order to bear witness to the appalling suffering of animals being transported to slaughter and to show them some compassion before they're killed. Now there's been a huge growth in safety developing across the country this year. Um, it was originally founded, the movement, the safe movement was originally founded in Canada in 2010, but there are now around 80 groups set up worldwide in countries including the UK of course, but also the US, Australia, Brazil, Italy and Poland. Um, we try to support these whenever we can. So in August, um, we held a, we went along to support um, a vigil being organised by Essex Pig Save outside Chile Slaughterhouse in Essex. And these are just a couple of the really powerful images that we captured during that vigil. So of course, it was absolutely heartbreaking seeing these pigs and knowing that there was nothing that we could do to save them. But what was positive was the response that we got as a result of sharing the footage and the photos on social media. We had more than 200 requests for vegan information as a result of just sharing those photos and video that we made from the day. And that just demonstrates what a powerful impact the growth of the same movement and the videos and images that are being circulated on social media, what a powerful impact that's having for animals. And there are a number of um, vigils held on the 1st of November, World Vegan Day, of course. Um, and these had such a powerful impact that actually several slaughterhouses decided to close for the day. Of course, it was made clear to them that the vigils would be entirely peaceful, but obviously some of them felt that it, they didn't want to be slaughtering animals whilst the vigil was ongoing. Um, we went to support our local vigil, um, this was Charing Meats next in Kent, uh, we supported the vigil ran by the Kent Animal Safe Group, and as you can see, there's absolutely no activity on that day at all, nothing going on, and it was very clear that no trucks were coming in and no animals were being slaughtered that day. So, obviously, farm animal campaigning is a hugely important area, but just to move on to a few other areas that have seen some really exciting progress in 2016. The really brilliant really thing is that there's been a huge surge in public awareness about the cruel and destructive nature of ground shooting. Um, we conducted a poll earlier this year and found that nearly half of the comments would be in favour of the ban, and this rose to 63% um, when we overcounted those who expressed it. There have, of course, been the hugely successful petition to ban ground shooting, which gained more than 100. 
100,000 signatures and led to a debate in Parliament. We also ran our first um, Rouse Week of Action this year, which was hugely successful. Um, and you can see on the slide um, a photo of the action that we held outside the debate in Parliament, a um, photo called Raising Awareness um, Amongst the Public About the Cruelty and the Environmental Destruction Caused by Ground Shooting. Now, sadly, the debate was well dominated by <coughs> pro shooting and peace. Um, but it did demonstrate the incredible growth in support for a ban on ground shooting, which is obviously more than we've ever seen before. So, this section um, of dry to end animal experiments has always felt like one of the most challenging areas in which to make progress. And one of our key goals for this for our anti protection campaign is to raise public awareness about the cruel and unscientific nature of animal experiments. And one area that we particularly focus on is the charities that fund this section and urging people to support many charities instead. So we recognise how important the legacy income is to charities that fund this section. So this year we've launched um, a campaign which draws attention to this, broaches this really difficult subject, and urges people to ensure that when they're making a will, or if they're leaving a gift to charity, they're only doing so with humane charities that don't fund animal experiments. And we've had a really positive response to this campaign, and hundreds of people have already pledged not to leave money in their will to any charity that funds animal experiments. And that obviously has a really important impact on the income of those charities that still have policies which allow them to fund animal experiments. <coughs> um, and we, of course, continue to produce our charity guides, uh, little wallet-sized guides to good and bad charities, those that fund animal experiments, those that don't. And those continue to be really popular to fly out the door at animal aid. And around 1,000 people are now using our new cruelty-free giving app which gives people another way to check which charities fund animal experiments while they're out and about. So that's obviously really useful if they're confronted with somebody asking them for money on the street and they can just have a quick check on their app as to whether it's a charity that they want to support or not. And as well as this public awareness raising work that we're doing, it's also really positive to think about the exciting work being done to replace animals Testing. Just one example of this is the Lush Prize, which awards scientists and campaigners all over the world who are lobbying to change laws and also doing scientific work to directly replace animal experiments with humane alternatives. So they're working on the development of non animal experiments. And going along to the, um, the Lush Prize award ceremony last month was really, really positive and really inspiring just to find out about the amazing work being done all over the world to end the cruelty of animal experiments. Now, of course, all of this progress is thanks to you because none of it would have been possible without all those people who take action. So everyone who lobbies their MPs, spreads the word about charity funded good sections, spreads posts about vegan challenges, for instance, on social media. None of it would be possible without the brilliant people who take action for animals in their spare time. And we can do you for 2017 too, because we're determined that even more progress for animals is going to be made in 2017. So one of the really exciting things about 2017 is that animals will be 40 years old, so it's our 40th anniversary next year. <coughs> Just a few photos from our past to illustrate this. Um, photo on the left, you can see our founder, Jean Pink, um, joining demonstrators against animal research at Cambridge University. That was taken about 1980. And on the right was one of Animal Aid's first Christmas Without Cruelty bus tours. And as some of you may know, Christmas Without Cruelty was the previous name for the Christmas Fair which you're at today, which has obviously grown a huge amount since it was founded. But rather than looking back on what we've achieved, 
we're planning to celebrate our anniversary with a really exciting event that looks forward to the future. And Mark Gold, my colleague, is going to be talking about this and about how you can get involved at 2.40. So if you're interested, please do come along and listen to his talk. If you're not able to attend, then please do come and have a word with me at the end and I can let you know more about how to get involved. <coughs> So next year we're going to be doing a lot of work to ensure that this brilliant surge in compassionate living continues. We'll be continuing to promote veganism, support people in going vegan, and trying to make veganism easier and more appealing. So one of our key focuses over the coming months will be our Great Vegan University Challenge. So as I mentioned briefly earlier, this takes place in February, and gives them all the support that they need to go vegan. And of course it's tailored specifically to the needs of university students, so it focuses in particular on low-cost vegan meals, for example. So last year was the first year that we ran the Great Vegan University Challenge, and even then we had 1,600 participants, which is a fantastic result. But this year we'd like to make sure that it's even bigger and better. Did we have any students in the room at all? Brilliant! Fantastic! Um, so obviously you can help by advertising the challenge in your university, encouraging other people to take part, and you might even want to think about organising a special event during the month of the university challenge to help encourage people to go vegan. But even if you're not students, you can still help to promote it. So if you live in a town that has a university, for example, you might like to distribute some leaflets about the challenge in areas where there are lots of students, um, or if you know any students who might be interested in it, then let them know about it. And of course, it's always worth sharing posts about these sorts of events on social media, because even if you don't think you know any students, these things get passed on, and sooner or later are likely to reach the right person, so it's always worth doing. And Mark will be talking later on at 2.40 about some other ways that you can help to make sure that this trend towards compassionate lifestyle continues. So in 2017, we'll be continuing with our intensive political lobbying on CCTV and slaughterhouses, and we hope that by the end of 2017, we'll be even further forward than we are at the moment. Well, you can really help with this by going along and lobbying your MP. We often set up online actions um, where you can send a message to your MP and ask them to support a particular motion or go along to a particular debate, and these can have a really powerful effect. But I'd also really like to encourage people to go along and meet their MPs in person, um, because by doing this, you'll have a much better chance of letting your MP know how passionate you are about an issue and inspiring them to take action. Obviously, when you email or write to your MP, it's really valuable because it shows them what issues their constituents care about, but you do often end up getting a standard response back. Whereas if you meet them face to face, it's much easier to get an action taken. And of course, this doesn't just apply to CCTV. Whatever animal orientated campaign you're particularly passionate about, it's really worth making an appointment with your MP and going to see them face to face to talk to them about the issue. Um, so the easiest way to do this is to go along to one of your MP's regular surgeries and they advertise these quite widely. You can find details on their website um, or by phone in their office. So it should be a fairly easy thing to arrange and it's very worthwhile. In 2017, we'll be continuing to take our message of compassion out onto the streets of Britain. And we are, of course, very keen to harness the power of social media and online campaigning. But we also think it's absolutely vital to talk to people in person. Now, as you may have heard from us, our converted ambulance that you can see <coughs> in the pictures has been a, a fantastic campaign tool. But sadly, it's now had its day, and the time has come to replace it with a more modern and more environmentally friendly vehicle. We let you know about this a little while ago. We appealed to your generosity. Um, we've had a fantastic response from you, as we always do. Um, and thanks to you, we now have the funds to purchase either a new or low mileage van, which will be able to convert in the same way as the ambulance, um, these video screens, and the steel banners. So we hope to have the new vehicle up and running for tours uh, in 2017, early on the end of spring. Now some of our campaigns are of course linked to particular locations, but other, others of them can be done anywhere in the country. So if you have a strong local group in your town, 
visit, then please do let us know. We'd love to meet you, um, do some leafleting together, um, and of course we can help your local group get some media attention as well, because these um, battle bus tours often get good media coverage, so that gives us a great opportunity to give your local group a bit of a publicity too. And just to explain a couple of images here, um, these are both from tours that took place this year. This one here was just quite recent, our campaign to raise awareness about the suffering of Turkey for Christmas and encourage people to have a cruelty for Christmas dinner. <coughs> and this one here is our Dare You Watch tour. So we had a video containing slaughter footage hidden behind the curtain and we challenged members of the public to watch the footage and then rethink their choice of diet. And this always has a really powerful impact and gets lots of people deciding to give up meat or ideally go vegan. So to find out about what we're doing, because these are just a few examples of how we might like to get involved, but there'll be all sorts of other opportunities over the course of 2017, from demos, to outreach days, to online petitions, and vegan events, there will be so much to get involved with. So there are lots of ways that you can stay in touch with that page, but the really useful way is to sign up to our email list, so you receive a monthly And then we also send you occasional action alerts on the urgent need action taken on an issue. So you can either sign up at the web address there, or I've got some sign up forms here, or you can go and visit our campaign table downstairs, where there's also a facility for signing up to receive our email letters. And if you haven't already, then it would be great if you could follow us on Facebook and Twitter, because we let um, people know on social media about all the key initiatives that we've got coming up too. So that's another really useful way to stay in touch. And another thing that you might like to consider doing is joining Adelaide and becoming a member. So it costs just £21 a year, uh, less in some cases, and you receive our quarterly magazine Outrage, uh, which is packed full of news and action points, and you also receive discounts on our annual merchandise and lots of ethical retailers. So you can either sign up online on our website or we've got some membership forms here today, again at our campaigns table or over by the drink stand, so you can sign up there. So a few other things you might like to consider for getting involved in Adelaide. You can put yourself forward as a local activist. So what happens is we let you know if we have events coming up in your area that we need help with. And then if you're available, then you can get involved and give us a hand. And if you have a local group, um, do let us know about it and we can add it to our list. And we can put people in touch with you when they contact us, letting us know that they'd like to get involved with a local group. Um, we quite often have people phoning up at the office and saying that they'd like to get involved with a local group, wanting details of what where their nearest one is. So if we have your details on file and we'll to do so, then we can let them know um, that you're their nearest local group, and that's a really great way to grow the network of local and rights groups. So another way in which people can get involved with Animal Aid is to join our school speakers program. This is an absolutely crucial part of our work <coughs> and focuses on promoting a compassionate attitude towards animals amongst young people. We give hundreds of school talks and cuckoo demonstrations every year, giving young people practical information about how to prepare for cruelty for meals and how to live a cruelty for lifestyle. And for this, we rely on our brilliant network of voluntary school speakers. So we run a number of training workshops for school speakers around the country. You can sign up for those. Um, you're then assessed on the day as to your ability, and if you pass, then you become an animal school speaker. Um, we then contact you when a talk comes up in your area, and if you're free, then you have the opportunity to go and speak to young people about, um, about animals and about a compassionate attitude towards them. So if you'd like to get involved with this, then please do come and let us know. And if any of you live in the Kent area, we're particularly looking for school speakers in Kent at the moment. So before I wrap up, I'd also just like to talk about the fact that we're here to support you too. Of course, we'd love you to get involved with animal events and initiatives, but we 
know that there are independent entities all over the country doing absolutely fantastic work for animals, and we're very happy to provide the resources to make this <coughs> possible. So we have literature that we're more than happy to send out for people to people for free, um, and we do send out thousands and thousands of leaflets every year. Um, and we also provide sponsorship for vegan fairs whenever we can. Now, obviously, we can't do these. We can't sponsor all of them because there are now so many across the country, which is fantastic. But do get in touch if you do have a vegan fair that you're organising and you would like to be sponsored by us, and we always try to do as many as we can. Some of just a couple of events that we've supported recently on the slides. This was, again, our um, part of our compassionate Christmas outreach day where we provided leaflets. And this was the Maidstone Vegan Festival, which was the very first one of its kind this year. It was one of the good to be fairs that we sponsored. And if you're organising an event, um, we can always add it to our online diary, which is where a lot of people come to look at our news um, of good to be events. And if it coincides with our printing schedule, we can also mention it in Outrage, where we have a diary date section. And any time that you'd like any help or advice um, relating to organising groups of events or doing leafleting or anything like that, do let us know. We're always happy to try to advise and help as much as we can. So if you need any help at all, whether it's leaflets, advice, sponsorship, do please let us know and we'll do whatever we can to support you. So it's really positive how much progress has already been made, and with your help, we can make 2017 an even better year for animals. So do please sign up, get involved, and let us know how we can support your initiatives too. Thank you.